Today on BRS TV Investigates is tuning your skimmer's gate or standpipe adjustment valve the best way to tune your protein skimmer's performance or could there be a better way? We're testing the effects of air adjustments instead to tweak wet versus dry performance which might turn out to be one of the benefits of using a DC powered skimmer. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates where we put popular reefing gear, theories and methods to the test by experimenting on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And in today's experiment, it's phase two of last week's test where we looked at some differences between single pump skimmers compared to recirculating pump skimmers. And in this test, we're throwing some organic waste or skimmer foam fuel into three test tanks with recirculating skimmers so we can test the question, what's the best method of skimmer tuning? adjust the water level inside the skimmer, or adjust the airflow rate. The challenge that we're trying to overcome with our protein skimmer testing is to gain more knowledge into skimmer tuning, where historically, really the only guidance we've had up to this point is from the manufacturer who tells us the optimal sump water depth to install the skimmer, and then adjust the gate, ball, or riser tube valve until you achieve the skimmate production that you're looking for. You know, people say that adjusting the valve produces a wetter or drier skimmate, but does it really? Without changing the dynamic of airflow within the skimmer body, all we're really doing is pushing whatever foam your skimmer is capable of producing higher up into the body and then closer to the collection cup, and then calling that rate at which it collects into the cup either wet or dry. But really, in most cases, the type of foam we're producing is not wetter or drier. The foam itself remains the same, and in reality, all we did was change the point or the height at which it collects. I think all of us want the best performance from our skimmers as possible, and many of us have had our fair share of frustrations when tuning a skimmer from experiencing minimal performance to almost nothing at all, or inconsistent results where the skimmer cup constantly overflows. While many other reefers have achieved awesome results using the exact same skimmer, so if you aren't getting the performance results from your skimmer that you want, this video and set of experiments are definitely for you. Today we're going to test if changing the airflow into the skimmer is a better way of tuning it, meaning does less or more air actually drive wetter or drier skimmate, and within that, can we then adjust the water level to change the rate that we want to collect it? So we approach today's question from a few different perspectives, where in two tests, we use the Reef Octopus Regal 200 EXT DC recirculating skimmer. We learned from the last experiment that the recirculating design not only gave us full control over air draw, but compared to a single pump skimmer using the exact same pump, we were also able to achieve up to 40% more air. In the third test, we used three Red Sea RSK300 single pump AC skimmers and simply used a ball valve to tune the air draw. In the first test with three 200 EXT skimmers, we set each one to a different air draw rate using the push button speed adjustments on the DC Varios recirculating pump with them set to speed one, three, and five, which in our previous testing roughly worked out to be 440, 810, and 1080 liters per hour air draw respectively from left to right. We then set each skimmer's water height level inside the body to similar heights across the board and then began dosing five mils of organics every 10 minutes and then monitored their performance without any further adjustments. For organics, we used fresh skimmate from a handful of other skimmers around the office because skimmate is, by definition, organics that a skimmer is capable of pulling out. In the next test, we used the same pump speeds and air draw rates. However, this time we actively tuned each skimmer's performance by manually adjusting the water height using the gate valve as we dosed the same five mils of organics every 10 minutes. For the third test, we attempted similar performance testing using three Red Sea RSK300 AC pump driven skimmers where we manually set each skimmer's air draw using a valve on the skimmer pump air intake tube and then monitored their performance as we dosed equal amounts of organics to each tank. So let's get to the results and as I mentioned in test one, we set the air draw speeds of the Regal 200 EXT recirculating skimmers using the DC pumps control settings of the lowest speed one in the tank on the left, speed three in the middle tank, and the max speed five in the tank on the right. Adjusting the speed of a recirculating pump just like this is really the easy way to control the amount of air injected into the skimmer without affecting anything else. 
In tank three, which was set to the max airflow pump speed, there was approximately 60% more air than the low air speed in tank one. And because of that extra air, we can see wetter, bigger bubbles that pop rapidly. It's obvious that there's a ton of turbulence inside the skimmer body, which actually forces the wet foam up and into the collection cup. We can also see that the foam produced with this much velocity doesn't look to have a high concentration of organics, but there is definitely more fluid collected, which again defines wet skimming. One note here is that 60% more air injecting into the skimmer means 60% more air needs to leave as well. You can definitely see that here with bubbles rapidly rising through the neck at a high velocity, leaving the skimmer. The speed at which this is happening doesn't really leave time to develop a dry foam and why more air is likely always going to produce a wet foam with a similar diameter neck. In tank one, the lower air draw and velocity creates a very stable and super dry foam head where the bubbles are thick and visually brown with an obvious high organic content. They don't really move up and out into the skimmer collection cup, which means there's less fluid in the skimmate produced, which is the definition of a dry skimmate, but ultimately a higher concentration of organics. Again, you can see that a reduced amount of air injected into the skimmer means a reduced amount of air leaving the skimmer and the lower velocity of bubbles, which gives the foam head time to develop a drier and thicker skimming. Looking at the middle skimmer set to the middle of the road number three power setting for the recirculating pump, it's already obvious how the change in the amount of air changes performance or the type of foam that the skimmer produces which isn't to say that a wetter or drier is better, but more so that you have the ability to tune the air to your specific tank needs. Again, a skimmer is an engine designed to produce and collect foam where the best foam production likely comes from matching the amount of air to the amount of organics. But let's take a look at how the next test and how actively adjusting the skimmer affects the foam. Moving on to the second test where we ran the skimmers and dose through organics in a similar fashion to the first test, only this time we manually controlled how we collected the different wet and dry skimmates by actively adjusting the water level inside the skimmer using the gate valve, which is more realistic as to how a majority of us would run this skimmer at home, where you choose the type of foam production and performance you want, and then use the water valve control to change how it's collected. Looking at the time lapse of all three tanks, we're basically seeing similar results across the board with tank one still creating a very dry, thick foam, tank three producing a large amount of bubbles and a wet foam, and tank two splitting the difference between the two. It's just obvious that controlling the amount of air has a great impact on the type of foam skimmers are producing. The largest takeaway for me from this second test is that now we can control how we collect the skimmate, where by adjusting the water height inside the skimmer, we can push more of that dry skim foam from tank one into the cup rather than allow it to collect on the sides of the neck. Or in tank three, we can lower the wet skim foam so that it collects less water, yet still produces less organically concentrated watery skimmate. For test three, we tried similar air adjustments using a single pump AC skimmer included on these Red Sea RSK 300 skimmers using a 3 8 inch Murloc ball valve and a 3 8 inch stem by barb adapter to control the amount of air coming into the body with skimmer one set to 150 liters per hour, skimmer two set to 300 liters per hour and skimmer three set to 600 liters per hour. Right away, we can see that restricting the airflow on these single pumps pulling double duty still worked well in the middle skimmer set to 50% less airflow than skimmer three on the right. However, skimmer one at 75% less air, the water flow flowing through the skimmer has increased to a point where it forces micro bubbles out of the body and into the surrounding tank. So what we're seeing here is that when you restrict the airflow on a single speed AC pump like this, the pump will replace the decrease of air with an increase in water, which will dramatically increase the water flowing through the skimmer. And even though there is less airflow, the increase in water flow forces some of the bubbles out of the skimmer body. So with an AC pump like this, to some degree, controlling or adjusting airflow will work, but not at the lowest levels. 
as we can see, there is a difference between using a recirculating DC skimmer and a single pump AC skimmer, where adjusting air draw on each design does work at dynamically changing the type of skimmate foam produced. However, the DC design just does it better. In just a second, we're going to share what we have planned for the next evolution of this test that will probably hit a large amount of reefers just like you who use a single pump skimmer on your own tank. But first, let's rate today's question. So today we asked the question, what's the best method of skimmer tuning? Adjust the water level inside the skimmer or adjust the airflow rate? And with a 10 out of 10 reef certainty, I'm gonna go ahead and say that adjusting the air is 100% the better way to adjust the type of foam you produce versus simply adjusting the water height with a gate or riser tube valve alone. This starts to give the water height adjustment a fundamentally different purpose altogether, where rather than just rely on it to tune the skimmer on its own, we now can use it primarily as the skimmate collection adjustment while leaving the actual tuning to the air draw adjustment. Today we showed some distinct advantages to an independent DC recirculating pump versus a single AC pump, but what if we wanted to strike a balance between both options? So many of us have used or migrated to a single pump DC skimmer, myself included, where you could just use the control pad to adjust the pump speed, causing both air draw and water flow to be adjusted up or down in unison. But in doing so, will we see similar stability and performance as we did with the DC recirculating skimmer? We plan to test out exactly that in our next test as we continue to look at protein skimmers from all angles and how they can affect our tanks. There's definitely some benefits beyond organic filtration that skimmers have to offer, such as raising pH in our tanks. So if you're one of those struggling to keep pH up and want to know how a skimmer and some media can help without denting your wallet with frequent media replacements, Ryan lays it all out in this video using a beta recirculating CO2 scrubber idea that just might be the end to your pH troubles, so check it out.